Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we spill tea left, right, and everywhere in between. In today's video, we are diving back into some hot tea history and covering all things Tyler Oakley. If you're new to the channel, we post hot tea updates on your favorite celebrities and influencers every day, but we also do what we call hot tea history videos where we take a deeper look into those influencers and share some more in-depth information about their past and their backgrounds. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. You can also head over to the Hot Tea Twitter account where you can follow and also send us any messages about tea or topics suggestions that you would like to hear about. Alright, let's get comfy, grab a snack, and let's spill some hot tea history. Tyler Oakley is a well-known YouTuber whose channel seemed to just die. After a good run of popularity on the platform, Tyler, like many other YouTubers from back in the day, saw an incredible decline in his views and support on YouTube. But who is he and what happened? Tyler, born Matthew Tyler Oakley in Michigan 1989, began his YouTube career in 2007 when he uploaded his first video and from there his channel kind of took off. He posted his first video while he was still a freshman in Michigan State University where he would later go on to graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Communication, Marketing, and Social Media. This qualification likely helped him with his future success on YouTube. According to Wikipedia, during this time, Tyler went through some rather dark thoughts after a breakup with a longtime boyfriend, cited in his book Binge, where apparently he wrote about the matter having experienced some unaliving thoughts. Having gone through this mental health turmoil, it can help explain why Tyler got into the charitable work that he did later down the line. Tyler has been very involved with the Trevor Project, having interned for them as well as hosting a red carpet event for them and raising around half a million dollars for their organization. The Trevor Project is an organization that focuses on helping the LGBTQ plus youth and their mission is to end suicide among the LGBTQ plus community. In the earlier years of Tyler's YouTube career, his content mainly consisted of short little updates where he would talk about his day. There have been two tragedies in my life. One, I got a bloody nose and it got all over my favorite bracelet. Two, my flip flop broke for good. And this eventually progressed into what we now call story times and then eventually into vlogs. About nine years ago was when he started to do collaborations and challenge videos, which was a pretty organic progression on his channel and it just made sense. Mix it up. <laughs> Give it a little, you know. Oh. oh God, I can hear it. Are you ready? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> banana. In my opinion, the 2013 slash 14 era was when Tyler's content changed for real. As you can see that he went from doing basically all of his videos alone to doing basically all of his videos with someone else. You can also see that around that time in the videos that he does on his own, the titles became a lot more provocative. Six years ago in 2016, Tyler went on the Ellen DeGeneres show and from the research I have done on Tyler and his fan base, this might be the moment where everything begins to change in Tyler's world. We are back with Tyler Oakley and you wanted to play a game, so we're gonna play a game. Yeah, so, okay, I'm gonna just treat this as if it's like my YouTube channel, okay? okay? Hi everybody, my name is Tyler Oakley and I'm here with the one and only Ellen DeGeneres! <laughs> At this point, Tyler is still very much him, and even in the comment section of the video he shares with the Ellen interview, fans notice that he is wearing the same clothes that he was on the show, so as if he rushed home to upload a YouTube video to share with all of his day ones. So that happened! Um, can we just talk about this life that I have, that I somehow fell into, that I get to have, that you guys created for me. I feel like this is like a journey that we are going on together and I couldn't be more thankful. That same year though, Tyler tweeted something that would split his audience and possibly hurt his career. Tyler tweeted in October 2016 saying, Psst, seeing an entire race of people is quote not your type isn't just a preference. It's just racism. Not here to argue, just informing. He continued on to say, maybe instead of replying to this to justify your racism, look inward as to why you choose to write off millions of people based on race. To those saying my argument implies gay people are sexist, sexual orientation isn't a choice. Writing off an entire race is. I can't help what I'm retracted to. Let's dissect the why. Society makes beauty standards slash favors whiteness. Your quote preference is prejudice. 
The reaction in the comments is really surprising in my opinion, with way more people disagreeing than I would have thought. Whether I missed the point of the tweet or not, I'm not sure, but I will say that if you lump an entire race of people together, effectively dehumanizing them, that's racist. If you consciously make a decision to dislike an entire group of people based on the race, that's also racist, but I will leave it at that. But with the research that I did on Tyler, this tweet really pissed a lot of people off and could be a part in what started to happen with his YouTube channel decline. Although I don't think that it was entirely the reason behind it. Tyler started interviewing celebrities and doing red carpets and television appearances, and this could be where the real decline began. From 2013 up to 2016, Tyler accumulated 8 million subscribers. After 2016, which would also be after Ellen and after the tweet, those subscribers started to drop, and in 2021, they dropped below 7 million. Tyler's YouTube video collabs went from other YouTubers to huge celebrities like Doe Deschanel, Kelly Clarkson, Kristen Bell, Idina Menzel, and so on, and he got quite into politics as well, being a very public Democrat. Now, there is nothing wrong with an influencer using their platform to talk about whatever politics they're into, but it should be noted that this was an important and obvious change in the type of video and content that Tyler had been putting out that had skyrocketed his career. Basically, it wasn't exactly what people had signed up for. We see this happen with a lot of YouTubers. They get bigger and their platform changes from low-budget filming into their bedrooms to starstruck collabs and interviews, but I think it's a huge contributing factor to what made his channel basically die. Tyler became way more mainstream and had political figures on his channel for interviews, and that was likely something that his viewers were not interested in. Plus, when you get into political content, you slice your followers into portions and often lose some. I'm not saying that you should not voice your political opinions, but rather I'm just pointing out what likely happened. Something to note as well is that Tyler started his channel like 13 years ago. Anyone watching back then and watching even 6 years ago has likely grown and gotten into other things and maybe his channel just no longer supports their interests. We see this happen all the time on the platform. But Tyler has collected a plethora of awards regardless throughout his YouTube career, including in 2014, these awards, in 2015, these awards, in 2016, these awards in 2017, the Out Web Fest's Vanguard Award, and then these ones in 2018. Along with the awards, there was also a long string of nominations to go with that. Up until about a year ago, Tyler was still posting on his channel regularly, and his content, while very injected with political videos, still had the same sort of theme as prior years with the inclusion of reaction videos and Q&As, as well as hauls and challenges, but there was a very clear decline in views. In 2020, Tyler posted a video titled See You Later, in which he explains that since he began YouTube back in college when he was about 18, he has never taken a break and now was the time to do just that. I'm going to be working on some stuff that I have always wanted to do. I do not have an end in sight for when I will be back. His posting schedule was every Tuesday up until this video, and he basically says that he's going to be working on some new projects and heading in a different direction. I am in no way leaving YouTube forever, so let me just say that. I will be back at some point, but I'm not going to say when because I don't know when, and it might take me a second, so. He says that he intends to continue the channel for as long as he loves it, but offers out to his audience to comment suggestions on what they would like to see from him when he returns. Some comments read, can you have a series where you sit down and chat with the old YouTube crew? I would love to see you just chit chat with like Joey, Scott, Mitch, Sawyer, Zoe, and Alfie, Marcus, Joe, Connor, the Holy Trinity, and Colleen. I don't even expect any tea to be spilled or anything, just a catch up session to talk about the good old days. I would honestly love to see some villains with Mamory, Grace, and Hannah. Anything with all of you is hilarious. So it seems like a lot of people are asking for like interview-esque videos. And many fans were saying they would love to see some reunited collab content with Mamrie, Grace, and Hannah. I also noticed while in the comment section of this video that there was nothing but support and appreciation for Tyler for having posted so consistently throughout the years. Tyler ends that video saying, see ya in 2021, but lies. Since then, Tyler has been super into live streaming and is very active on his Twitch platform where he streams The Sims, Fortnite, GTA, and other games, and recently, like this week recently, he celebrated a birthday. So Tyler is still out here, is still on social media, and is still putting out content, but just not on YouTube anymore. Him and his bestie Corey still have their podcast, Psycho Babble, and from just looking, it seems that Tyler has grown up and fully moved on from what he used to share with us in ways of content. He is now 33 and seems genuinely happy, and if I'm honest, Tyler was a pleasure to research and cover in this deep dive. 
It's rare that we come across an influencer who stays so active and present and has basically nothing to show for problematic behavior. In addition to that, he also has done some positive work for many communities and continues to do so and use this platform in a good way to this day. And with that, this will be all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Comment your thoughts down below on Tyler and if you are a fan or were a fan back in the day or maybe a new fan today or if you've never heard of him. <laughs> but for now, let's enjoy some eye bleach together.